they told me I have seven minutes, so no code, just slide, just code, no slides. And what I want to talk a bit through to in this short lightning talk is how we can speed up monorepos, right? So what I have here is the PMPM workspace. And so it, it, it uses PMPM as the package manager system. It's the same, same thing almost like for NPM or Yarn workspaces, so there's no big difference there. So what you can see here in this file, we specify where our packages live, which is here in this packages folder, where each of the packages basically has its own node modules. They have their own kind of package JSON definitions, entry files, also their own scripts. And most importantly, down here, they might even have dependencies between them, right? So in a monorepo scenario, and this is a special case where it is very often used in open source libraries where you want to publish multiple packages, and they might have some dependencies between them. Like if you look at the React, GitHub repo, Vite, Vue, Angular, a lot of them use these type of approaches. So how does this work? Now in PMPM specifically, there's this prefix, and so that means you should resolve the package locally within the monorepo but not go out for some npm registry. And in Yarn and npm workspace, you don't need that, but that star there will be the same. And so that simply means I always want to depend on the latest version because it's just locally in my workspace, right? Don't do this for production apps. This is just within the monorepo. So where does this package live? That's where this comes into place again because it can figure out, can it either live in these examples folder or in a packages folder? In this case, it's this UI library here. And again, this is a package with its own build scripts, test scripts, potentially others as well. And then we have at the top here some example applications. Now, if you develop this as your application monorepo, this might be the actual production apps. In open source package-based monorepos, this is most often example pages where you test out your product or your packages or it might even be deployed alongside your documentation for some live demos. So how do you run things in such a monorepo? Well, you could obviously CD into the packages and just trigger these scripts, right? That would totally work. It's not really handy, though. And so, for instance, PMPM has a concept such as filters, right? And so, for instance, I can say, Pack, filter me all the packages are in this packages folder and run me that script here, which is that build script, right? And so it recursively traverse these packages. Now in this case, it's a simple setup. So we just have two of them and it would build those. Now I can also go and just build a single one. For instance, I have here that Remix up there and I target the dev script. And so that would then launch my Remix application and it can serve it then at local 3000 and I can kind of browse my Remix application here, right? So I have it just renders the components that are in here. Yeah, it's super bright. <laughs> All right, so you might be wondering, like, what is wrong with this setup? And there's nothing really wrong here, right? Because it works, and especially in a smaller setup, it, it totally works fine and scales nicely. However, there are already some kind of things that we could optimize. For instance, these packages depend potentially on each other. So for instance, the next, our Remix app, import a product list, which internally we have seen depends on the UI library. So what happens, for instance, if I delete this disk folder, because they consumed the disk folder because in the package JSON we reference these files, which is compiled output of our TypeScript files, then if I serve, for instance, again, the Remix app, it will kind of break because it cannot resolve those entry points anymore, and so it breaks, right? And so I would need to kind of run that filter again, rebuild it, and so then it would work. But the thing is, I need to keep in mind the order, how I built them. I need to first build the UI, then the product list, and then the application. Plus, if I rerun this filter again, it would always keep running, right? Even though we didn't touch anything, we didn't change anything. And so this is where, for instance, a package like NX comes in, which can help you speed up some of these things. So how can you install NX? Now, first of all, you can just run NX at latest in it, or just add the package on your own. So the advantage of running this script here is that it looks at your workspace and the structure of it, and it kind of walks you through a couple of steps of kind of trying to configure it for you. For instance, one of the first questions here is like, what scripts need to run in order? And we just learned that the built one might need to run in order because we need to respect that ordering of those things. And so I would choose the built one here. Next up, it asks me what type of scripts of those here in your package monorepo are cacheable. And so here, for instance, probably the build would be cacheable, linting, type check, and test, potentially. 
Usually the dev server and the, the start scripts are not cacheable because that's the development environment you want to kick off. And then it asks me also for outputs. We can just skip them because it already captures most of the common outputs, such as this and build, and it would already monitor those for the output there. So before we dive in, what we can already do now is run the NX graph command. And this gives us an overview here of how that monorepo now looks like. You can actually, by the way, run this even on a monorepo setup that doesn't have an X. So you just run npx nx graph, and it would analyze the dependencies and give you such a graph, which is really useful for reasoning about how the monorepo structure looks like. And you can then filter and do a couple of nice operations on top of here. But the more interesting part is this graph is just now for visualization, but behind the scenes, NX obviously uses this also for like figuring out the ordering and how to build things, so to optimize stuff. So what has happened when we ran that installation of NX? Basically what we got is a single NX package here and an NX JSON file. The NX JSON file is kind of like your configuration, kind of metadata for NX, and it mostly contains what are the cache operations, because those can obviously highly depend on your own outcome, your own structure. Some scripts might not be cacheable. And it also defines such a pipeline where it knows actually that order of building, right? So here we're telling it whenever you run a build command, run on all its dependencies, which is that hyphen in front, the build first before you run it based for the package itself. And so what happens now, I can run the commands, but I can run them with an X rather than using a PMPM filter command, so through the NX pipeline. So I can do an X, uh, for instance, build, awesome cards, product. That's my name for the product package in here. So if you go in here in the product list, you can see here at the top, this is my name here. And so to run that build here for us, you can already see this, if I scroll a bit up, this run one dependent product task first, which succeeded, right? And that was our UI library. It doesn't show me the output because I'm not really interested in. So PMPM beforehand just showed me all the output because it just runs through the tasks. But I'm actually just interested in this product build. Now this just happens to be a side effect that I need to first build that UI library. And similarly, obviously, I can also run, let's do run many, let's say run multiple tasks across all the packages that I have. For instance, here, build, lint, and testing, and what other types I could potentially have. And so if I run that, you can also see it kind of shows a nice output of iterating over the things without showing you every single detailed output, because you're not really interested in that unless it fails. If it fails, it would show it to you, right? And moreover, up here, you can see we ran already the build for products and UI beforehand. So it doesn't run them anymore, but it caches them, so it's quicker. In fact, if I rerun this from the ground up again, it will cache all of them from the, from the beginning. And so that's about it. Um, just obviously scratching the surface, that's how you can add an X on a simple package-based monorepo. Uh, and from there, you can then expand further. So you can add automation on top. One common thing is often like once you have such a package structure, you want to generate multiple of those because you don't want to just copy and paste every time. And so there's options there in an X as well. If that sounds interesting, connect with me here. We also have a booth outside, so combine, we can also dive deeper on this type of stuff. Thanks.